You're listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature. Hi, this is Father Mark Bulos, and you are listening to Tarazi Tuesdays with the Bible as Literature podcast. This week, Father Paul explains that the turning of the Nile into blood in Exodus is figurative, denoting destruction. I am happy to introduce Father Paul on the Bible as Literature podcast, Tarazi Tuesdays. He sent me, Shulahani, saying, let my people go, Shaleah. There you go. You have a play in the same verse on the two verbal forms from the same root. So that they may serve me, and again, they serve me, we have to eliminate it, so that they would become my slaves in the wilderness. Stop using the word serve. You have submit as a slave. It's the same word in Hebrew and in Arabic. And time and again, I say to the people that God did not liberate you from the servitude, slavery of Egypt, period. No, he liberated you from the slavery of Egypt so that you would become his slaves. And don't tell me this is only Old Testament. Read Romans chapter 6. Stop now. Put pause on the podcast and go and read Romans chapter 6. And don't tell me, oh, Father Paul, life so exaggerated and so Pause the podcast and read Romans chapter 6. And behold, you have not yet obeyed. And the obeying in Hebrew is to hear, to hear out. And that is also very important, but you've heard me a zillion of times repeating it, but what can I do? And that's why, you know, in the story of Simon and Peter uh, in the Gospels, especially Matthew, you have a dig that Simon is supposed to listen, and he is not. And that's why in the Gospel of Matthew, it's, it's just unbelievable. I mean, in the others you say, go away from me, Satan. But in Matthew, it is said immediately after Jesus says to Peter or Simon Bariona, Blessed art thou, because this has been revealed to you by the Heavenly Father. It's amazing. And then within one verse, you have Jesus presenting him as Satan. These are very hard texts to swallow, my friends. That's why theology is very dangerous, but because you start speaking to the people in a way as people do in North America to make them feel good so that they would come again to Sunday school. Why? Because your interest is not to teach the Bible. Your interest is to show yourself and your people and your bishop that your Sunday school is growing in number. It's like offering at the end of every semester, uh, chocolate and icons and so on, and inviting the people for a dinner together, the children. That's how you teach the Bible. But that's not scripture. So long as I have breath, I'm going to follow the lead of scripture and keep repeating the same thing. 
anyway, it's good because if people get so frustrated with me and decide to shut me out by not listening to my podcast, I will smile thinking in my heart that it's already too late. You've heard it all. Verse 17 is extremely important because you see functionally the parallelism between the Lord on the one hand and Moses slash Aaron on the other hand. Listen to that. How is that possible? Thus says the Lord. Okay, he's sending them. The Lord is asking them to say to him, thus says the Lord. By this you shall know that I am the Lord. Behold, I, who is the I here, is the Lord, I, will strike the water that is in the Nile with the rod that is in my hand. Can you imagine having a long weekend conference between Richard Benton and me presenting papers, defending two different positions, is it the hand of God or the hand of Moses and through the hand of God, but it doesn't matter. Because ultimately, whether it is the finger or hand of God, as we shall see in a few chapters, or the hand of Moses, it doesn't matter. The text later will use both figurative approaches to speak about the words in the Torah of God and the commandments. I mean, even the Greco-Roman fathers of the church, through their great Ignatius of Antioch that people revere, you know, although he's Antiochian, you know, I mean, he's not such a big deal. But he speaks about the bishop being like God or like Jesus. Why aren't you scandalized? I'll tell you why. Because your bishops like it. Look at them, how they appear. Just open the websites of all the Orthodox archdioceses. At least Francis does not appear like that. But every Orthodox bishop, even without a diocese, appears like that. That's why we like it. But that's not what Scripture is saying. Scripture is following the lead of the father of Scripture, Ezekiel. There is a written scroll, written on both faces of the scroll. You cannot add or deduct, it is so. Remember my famous statement. All Ezekiel had to do is to burp out the scroll that is in his stomach. And that explains to you that the author did not have any trouble to refer to Moses as the God of Aaron who is the prophet. Because Moses functions as the prophet of his God. Get used to these things. Get used to functionality the way I understand it. If you have not been bred with a Semitic language, growing up speaking it, you can't understand functionality. Because your silly languages rely on the famous is between the noun and the predicate. Everybody should listen to the latest podcast of Andrea Bacchus, whose title is there is no is, notice I said, whose title is, there is no is. So I sent her an email and I said, since 
I listened to the podcast, I realized that you is not. And very cunningly she answered me, of course, if Jesus is not, I is not, with a smiley. But then she said, but I am. See? Very nice. That's written in an email. That's how you communicate the message. Let's proceed. And the Lord said to Moses, say to Aaron, you see how the text plays on this, that Aaron is the equal of Moses, but also his emissary. And stretch out your hand over the waters of Egypt, the canals, and so on and so forth. And Moses and Aaron did as the Lord commanded in the sight of Pharaoh in the sight. He lifted up the rod and struck the water that was in the Nile and the water turned into blood. Which is figurative for the destruction, the death. You cannot drink water that became blood. But the word blood because he could have used any other thing like the sand that is also red and so on. But that's the intention and you could see it at the end of 21 and there was blood throughout all the land of Egypt. The Egyptians could not drink water from the line and there was blood, in other words, people died, namely killed by God himself. But again, the magicians did the same, and the heart of Pharaoh remained hardened. We have here the verb hazak. That's the root for Ezekiel. And Pharaoh did not listen and went to his house and he did not lay from the verb sheath, shut, which is the root of the name Seth way back in Genesis chapter 4. He didn't make it lay upon his heart to make it written on his heart. And again, the original is very important in the sense that you listening to a translation, you are not hearing what the original hearer is saying. Whatever your theologians tell you, you're not. And all the Egyptians dug ground about the Nile for water, and because they couldn't drink, seven days passed after the Lord has struck the Niles. The seven is the totality of the time of God. One more time as a reminder for my hearers that seven is the totality, the divine totality, and ten it is the human totality. I spoke often about that, and you can read my intro to the Gospel of John and Revelation, where I discuss numbers. So we have to get attuned to that. There is no difference between 7 and 10, and yet there is some difference because when you hear them in the text, they function differently. The Bible as Literature is a production of the Ephesus School Network.